Okay, so hi, I'm Andrea. I'm a business intelligence engineer at NerdWallet, and this is a picture of me in a past life when I was still getting haircuts, which I am no longer doing. Anyways, today I decided to do a talk about building a reputation on more than just dashboards. I chose this topic because I believe that the best data nerds and data teams are the ones that always try to align themselves with the goals and the interests of the business. Teams that are really strategic about what they work on and really thoughtful about who they work with. Simultaneously, I've noticed it can take a long time for data teams to kind of evolve into their final form and start becoming really influential partners to the rest of the company. Often we're just so focused on delivering dashboards, it can feel like we hardly have any time to do anything else. So I created this talk in the hopes that it'll be helpful to analytics engineers that need to balance an ever growing list of dashboard requests with the desire to do more than just deliver data. Folks that want to figure out what the business really cares about and use data to add color and insight uh, to influence those decisions. What we will cover, why I believe at least data teams exist, the relative value of data work over time, and how to move beyond just dashboard delivery. Okay, so for me, data folks are hired to help businesses make really good decisions. And we try to do that in two primary ways. One, we make data available to the rest of the company. We collect clean and transform data, which we then deliver to teams to use however they'd like. We make the data available and we try to make it fast to query. Two, we provide insights and recommendations based on the data. Generally, I think this is the most valuable thing that we offer, but it takes a lot more time, a lot more effort, and a lot more business context to do this really well. And moving from a world of data delivery to data insights and analysis and partnership, it's often quite a jump because we get a lot of dashboard requests, a lot of requests for data access, marketing campaign reviews, product launch marketing, sorry, product launch monitoring, quarterly team KPIs and all that good stuff. And standing up a dashboard usually takes longer than you expect if you're doing data collection and instrumentation, modeling, testing, visualizing, not to mention the time you spend on the road trying to troubleshoot when dashboards break or numbers don't line up. But really making data available via dashboards is really only step one. As illustrated in this graph, which was published in a blog post by Just Engage, the value of data work increases as we start to move beyond just delivering data and start to help our users actually analyze and interpret data to make decisions. We initially start by providing data access, first by creating queries and dashboards and reports, and then by building environments where users can self-serve. But if we want to move beyond data delivery and start to create partnerships and insights, we need to A, build meaningful relationships across the organization, and B, have really strong individual and collective understanding of the business. So we're able to contextualize and make good strategy recommendations. And steps three and four are really like where everything gets interesting and fun, where data folks start to get asked to join roadmap planning, goal setting, feature prioritization, where they start to slowly become indispensable partners to teams and decision makers at the company. But that takes a lot of time, most likely a very long time, most likely years, because in the short term, we're primarily focused on providing data access. Our incentive is really just to deliver as many dashboards, models, and reports as we can. And most of the time, we don't actually need a deep understanding of the data or business to do that. So if we don't intentionally look around for opportunities to evolve, it'll probably be a long time until we get there. This sort of got me wondering, is there anything I can do individually to sort of help us get to steps three and four? What are some steps I can take today using the tools and the work that I already have to start learning more about the business and working more closely with folks from other teams? So I came up with a few things that I can do, even as an individual contributor within a larger data organization. The first opportunity is really to use data requests to just sponge up all the business context. When I get a request for a dashboard, there are usually a lot of steps that need to happen before it's ready to be released. We'll probably need to create a bunch of different documents explaining what we want and why, attend lots of meetings, and start collecting, storing, modeling, and testing data. And at every step in the process, important information is discovered, like why we care about this data, how we plan to use it, and how it's created information that's helpful for both our team and our business users. But usually this context is lost and forgotten somewhere along the way. 
the dashboard that we create at the end might look nice, but only has really the final numbers. So it's only usable for the couple of users who happen to already know the data pretty well. Our dashboard doesn't tell us how to use it, what business question it's trying to answer, or which metric definitions it's using. So other users can't easily find the dashboard, understand it, or make any use of it. After a couple of months, even we will likely forget why we built the dashboard and what we should take away from it. So instead of rushing to just get a dashboard delivered, I've realized there's actually an opportunity to use a dashboard request as an excuse for me to both individually slow up more business context to be more effective and also help our end users make better use of the dashboards that I create. One way that I've started to gather this information is by starting a Slack channel where I bring all the data producers, end users, engineers, et cetera, together. Note that I try to give people a heads up just because I don't want them to feel like they've gotten thrown into another rogue channel. But what's great about creating a channel of communication like this, uh, if it doesn't already exist already, is that I'm creating a single space where we can get all of our questions answered and post updates, which keeps everyone on the same page as much as that's possible. It also allows me to sort of meet and work with both upstream data producers and downstream users. So everyone knows each other and can understand the development process better if they're curious to know that. And then the channel also exists as a log of interactions in case I ever wanna refer back to a decision that was made or a conversation that was had. And I personally find that super helpful. I listed some examples of the kind of questions I like to ask in this kind of channel, but there are surely tons that you could ask. So anyway, once we've gathered up all of this great context, it's time to put it somewhere. So another opportunity is really to write and share what you've learned. I know documentation is somewhat of an unsolved problem for data, and there are always concerns about information becoming outdated. But in my view, having a document or a log that's temporarily very useful but eventually outdated is better than having no information or usefulness at all. Creating a document outlining what users should know about a data set or a dashboard increases the odds that it'll be used and that it'll be used correctly. So I think it's important to sort of pick out what information is important to pass along, both for our end users and for our internal team. I try to put these notes where I think the right people will see them, like in a dashboard, a wiki, a DAG, or a SQL model, and add a date to it. Even if it gets out of date, it exists as an artifact of what was true at that time, which in and of itself is pretty valuable. I think documentation doesn't need to be super polished or super long, but at least it needs to exist to be helpful. It's also really worth adding this information and context to the dashboard itself. These are some dashboard elements I think make dashboards really useful, or at least more useful, and help me later on when people ask about a dashboard I built six months ago. For example, adding instructions about how to use it, a clear stated purpose for why the dashboard exists in the first place, business context explaining why we care about a particular metric, and benchmarks like typical values and industry averages. Maybe some assumptions, lineage, transformations and caveats that you have, like hidden filters, known bugs, links to model logic, et cetera. It's also helpful to include metadata about the dashboard, like who created it, who's using it, and when it was last updated. And finally, opportunity three, really connect with coworkers, meet the humans. It's easy to get siloed when we're just delivering dashboards and reports. But if we wanna start building relationships with other teams and partnering on projects, we can't just wait for a data request to fall into our lap. We need to find ways to connect with other teams and understand where strong partnerships may be possible. A few organic ways to do that. Sit in on meetings where metrics are reviewed. It's a cool way to absorb a lot of business context, see how data is analyzed in your organization, and see if there are any data curious coworkers that you haven't met yet. Another option is to follow up with and encourage users that self-serve or that present metrics in meetings. Ask them what they're working on and ask if you can help. Also joining or creating virtual coffee chats with teams and team members that you don't work with regularly gives you access to different contexts and different amounts of, work, uh, amounts of information. And also introduce yourself to new users when they first get access to your tools or self-serve environments. The more connected that we are with other teams, the sooner we're able to create partnerships where we can both coach and learn from our business users and the sooner we'll be able to build a reputation of data partnership rather than just data delivery. In the end, data is only really useful with context and we have an opportunity to build more useful data products and become better, better data nerds by learning about and communicating that context. Even while we're focused on reporting and data delivery, 
we can start to develop data partnerships and expertise by using data requests to sponge up business context, documenting what we learn, and connecting with lots of different coworkers. And that is it. Thank you.